Hey guys, it's your pal Victor here and I've got a review for you today. Uh, last year, we saw a movie at Sundance called Eight for Silver. It's actually coming out next week and now it's called The Cursed. So here's our review for The Cursed from Sundance last year. Check it out. Hey guys, it's your pal Victor Marino here from Cult Classics and Cult Following, continuing my reviews from Sundance 2021. I'm doing a quick capsule review here for Eight for Silver, uh, one of the uh, premieres that uh, happened at Sundance. And this was directed by uh, Sean Ellis, who actually directed um, two of my favorite movies, weirdly enough. He directed uh, Cash Out, and he directed uh, The Broken, which was it to the 2008 um, uh, Sundance Film Festival is also part of the After Dark Festival, Eight Films to Die For. It was kind of like about sort of like this invasion from the Body Snatchers riff that had, um, uh, that had uh, the actress who played Cersei uh, from uh, Game of Thrones and she doesn't realize she's a doppelganger who's replaced a real person. It was kind of interesting. Um, yeah, so um, we're going to talk about Eight for Silver, and this is a trippy movie. It kind of feels like an old, like it's a slow burn movie, like it's a like like old school, like Hammer London, you know, British horror movie. Um, and it kind of also has a lot to do with uh, the idea of consequences for um, consequences for uh, uh, indigenous. Uh, uh, outsider uh, genocide and uh, it has to do with uh, basically this guy who's in command of some troops and um, uh, he uh, which is now kind of like a, not a cool way of saying that so it's it has that kind of ep element of like thinner or, or those sorts of uh gypsy curse movies but uh it's sort of like uh it's what they do to these romani people is shown very graphically and um at one point like uh the elder of the tribe she has like these set of teeth that are made from silver so one of the officers suggests uh taking it from them instead they don't and they bury her alive and it's sort of on on their land and it turns out uh the guy who uh who did who's who's wiping out these uh romani people these romani have a claim on the land and he's wiping them out to wipe out their claim a lot about uh sort of like to be said here about like colonialism or manifest destiny how it's fucked up because there are already people there um and uh these teeth and that elder keep calling out to people to come get them and uh it strikes uh the child of of that landowner um he calls out to one of his friends and he puts the teeth in his mouth and bites him and it unleashes a curse that's like werewolfism and um it turns out uh boyd holbrook is in this and he's a pathologist who's been sort of following these romani people to stop this curse and how it affects this town or, or this like i guess little household ship a uh, little fiefdom if you will um it's really strong. Um, the practical effects are actually really cool. There's CGI used on the final version of the creature, which I don't think is as strong. But there's a really cool pathology sequence that combines practical and CGI that is actually really cool and freaky. Um, I think the movie says a lot. I'm kind of leaving it vague because this movie like depends a lot on some reveals. So I've kind of skipped talking about those. Um, but as really, really good performances in Boyd Holbrook, which you might know, he was like, uh, Donald Pierce, the cyborg and Logan. And he was also in Gone Girl. He was, um, the guy who, uh, along with, the uh, with the other sort of, uh, ch the guy that rips off, um, you know, Gone Girl of her money when she's staying at that, at that hotel, you know? Um, uh, but he's really good in this and it's kind of like his movie 
And uh, it kind of plays with the idea of 30 pieces of silver, or the wandering Jew, sort of the price of betrayal also um, from the Bible. And that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, very muted colors, feels like a Hammer movie. Um, you know, if you don't know what Hammer means, like Christopher Lee, 1960s, 70s, like, um, you know, British proper Dracula. And that's kind of the whole thing. Um, I don't, I don't know that this necessarily reinvents a lot of tropes, but it's a cool take on a werewolf story. And I'm not a big fan of werewolf stories and I enjoy this. Um, I do think it's a little too long. It's all, it clocks in at almost two hours and there is some drag, but, uh, I think it's a cool watch and, uh, I'm glad I saw it. So if you're looking for some, a cool sort of werewolf movie down the line to catch, I would suggest this. I would imagine Shudder will probably end up with this at some point, um, you know, I, I, mean, I don't know that they bought it, but it feels like a movie that would be like on Shudder um, or IFC. One of those two, I'm sure, will end up with it.